can look at the weather and kind of predict certain days that are going to be good. You can, you can see those warming trends and those nights that are stay warm. Right before the cold front hits, what do the fish do? Well, they're typically going to be moving, and the thing about it is they should bite, and that's what we're looking for. Great days of fishing are, are something you always remember. And, and you know, the lake we're fishing right now, Choke Canyon, Clark and I about a decade, maybe 12, 13 years ago, had come down here and they had just gotten done spawning and they were just chomping. It's still the best day of filming I ever had. I think it's the best day of filming Wade ever had. I caught a 12, he caught two over eight, and we caught a host of four and five pounders and it didn't even take very long. It was like three or four hours. So. We've got good history on this lake. The thing about Choke Canyon is, is it's a lake that cycles. And Choke went through a bad cycle, and we just pretty much had fish down here in a while, but um, came, came recently, and the lake's been in great shape. We decided it's time for a return trip. So if you just go down the shoreline on the inside edge of the grass, you know, a lot of times the inside edge of the grass is what you're looking for in a grass lake because that's where they set up, that's where they want to spawn. But a lot of the time here, you can't get to that inside edge. No, I mean, you know, you got to find those holes. I mean, you can find holes, I think, around the hardwoods or just maybe there's a few rocks on a certain point, but when you can get there, it seems to be when we've been getting by. Oh yeah, by me by the front. He was. He's trying to win the Daytona 500. He was. Little jerk That's what makes him strong. I mean, he's just thick all the way to the back. Go back. To me. I'm always trying to figure out where the fish want to go. I mean, and that's the coolest part of, of fishing. It's like, where are they and how, how am I going to get a bite? And every day is so uniquely different. I was actually down here uh, three days ago and the water temperature was 56 degrees and it was a north wind and a high bluebird day. But when you look at the weather in the springtime and you can see an extended warming trend, especially with warm nights, uh, it gets, it gets you excited if you fish a lot because you know the fish are coming. You know they're going to set up in places where hopefully you can catch them. They're going to flood the banks, if, in other words. I can do this all day long. I'll never get tired of it. <laughs> oh, not a big one, Kevin, but I caught him. That's cool. I had one come out from under the bush and try to eat at that one. Coming up after this break, Wade and Clark start to put together a pattern for the day. Stay tuned to see just exactly how and why they're now getting more quality bites. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus free two day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. Got him? Good one? He feels good. Boy, he loaded up, didn't he? Good. About like mine, isn't it? No, I think it is. I, never, I didn't see that. I before. think so. God, that thing is dogging. Yeah. 
did one. <laughs> fat one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Caught that on a vibrating jig. Strike King Thunder Cricket. He's about as thick as that one. As thick as one I caught. They're just, they're, it's an age class of fish. Finding fish in a situation like this, um, you know, un obviously understanding the seasonal movements, where the fish are going to go is, is really key, where they want to spawn. We're, we know we're around areas where these fish want to spawn. So my theory on what happens this time of year is, is fish are moving out of deep water, out of drains, out of the middle of the lake, wherever they spend their time in the winter feeding, to ditches, guts, and then uh, on the flats. And they spend their time spawning on flats. So what, what's gonna happen out here in all this grass is, is they're gonna spawn in holes. They're not gonna spawn in this solid grass, but they're feeding in top of this grass. Good one. That's a nice one. Do I need to go get him? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. That didn't take long. Oh, ah, get over there. <laughs> That was fun. Throwing a little swim bait, Strike King Raid Swimmer. That's a nice fish, two and a half pounder. You know, when you're fishing this grass, there's holes all in it and little lanes. We're working the lanes as best we can. That is what, at least in our mind, those fish use those avenues to move into these big flats to spawn. And where they hide when our bait's coming over, they're in these holes. Like when we get up here, we're on that left end where that little bend is there and those trees are laid down, there's some holes out there. Got that one? Mm. I thought that was a nice one. one there. That just felt like the right kind of bite. Man, that's a ah, chunky fat fish. sucker, isn't oh, he? Man. <laughs> Look at that. That's a chub. That's, a, <laughs> that's fun. Oh, man. I like seeing him like that. that he's just, just he's as thick here as he is, is long. Thick, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty fun right there. A lot of times you're talking about, you know, fish moving. What we know is, is that they move and there's like ditches and drains that run all through this. So what happens is, is that those fish usually move on that, on that thoroughfare. Just, yes. you know, it really kind of what you would think. It doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be a bunch in the middle of it, but anytime you've got those thoroughfares, you've got an access point where you can get fish close to you. Sometimes if you catch them on the free side of it, you can catch a lot of them right there. Getting to, you know, sitting in one of those bins. In the ditches, right. Oh, 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 I think this is a big one. Oh, that yeah. is a good one. Ah. Mm. That's awesome. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, fish. Ah. That's fun. <laughs> he just looks just like a ball of water. <laughs> you knew what he bit him. Ah, the man has a big one. I mean, we're just taking a little lightweight Texas rig swim bait and reeling them over this hydrilla. And I mean, they're just piling out of those holes in the grass around the brush. I mean, this is one of the coolest bites I think you could have in bass fishing. Well, it's just because they the bite is so hard. Usually when you're fishing a winding bait, anything winding, it's kind of more of a load up. But yeah. when they hit a swim bait like this, it's something different. It's like a jig or worm bite. Boom, you know, and it's hard. Well, and these big ones are running, I mean, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet. So you I mean, can't even set the hook and they're gone. They're, they're just so fast. And usually that seems to happen when fish are shallow. This is deep enough, but maybe it's because the hydrilla, you know, there's just not much area in between the hydrilla and the, and the, yeah. and the top. And I mean, when they bite, I mean, it's like, <laughs> they go 20 feet on the bite. It's amazing. I mean, that, that bite right there was all I wanted and then some. Following this short break, we'll talk more in depth about this particular bite. The fish are attacking the swim bait, and Wade and Clark are having to reel furiously to keep up. Find out more next.
What are them sons of fishes up to now? Fellas, I give you the force trolling motor. It is the most powerful, the most efficient on the water. Yep. Most powerful. We're really in trouble now. And it's quiet, too. You can't swim here. What a dumb bass. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four-strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock-solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Engel, the original high-performance cooler. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Cool. Nothing big here. That's not bad, though. They're a good bite. Good, good solid fish. I mean, just up here where they should be wanting to go spawn, right? Yeah, they got they got to come up here somewhere. I mean, this that's the one thing about this place is there's just so much cover. Yeah. And you know, you're looking everywhere. There's grass. There's trees flooded. And they, they're gonna move. Oh, swing and a miss. Got you, right. You both of us are reeling swim baits across flooded hydrilla around a lot of brush, as you can see. And, you know, we're just, just winding it through the grass. And what's happening is we, we think, you know, we'll go by a piece of brush or a, or a hole in the grass and these fish are just darting out. And when the bigger ones bite, they bite with such speed that I don't think they make it real fast enough to catch up. Yeah. I don't know what I got. Oh. You know, Wade made the comment earlier, it's like a redfish when you bite. You know, when you catch a redfish, that fish is just gone. I mean, as fast as it can. These fish are the same way. My thought on it is, is that when you set the hook, there's not very much distance between the grass and the top of the water. And when they are in really shallow water, a lot of times, they just fly by you. Instead of going down and digging, they fly by you. It's so fast, we can't even keep up with them. There's Wade's got one right there. Good one, too. He went flying by. <laughs> I'm just going to be his voiceover guy from this point on. I'm just, I'm just voicing over. I mean, basically giving commentary as he catches bass. It doesn't seem really all that fair, but that's a nice thing. And they're biting. You better take advantage. Take advantage of it. Of it. Thank right. you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, to interrupt your interview. But that's a pretty good bite. <laughs> Bet it was. <laughs> We're using the Johnny Morse Platinum Signature Series reels here and the rods, really perfectly situated for this type of fishing. They've, they've got a fast enough retrieve uh, to be able to keep that bait moving, but also allow you to pick up a lot of line per turn to be able to catch up to these fish. But I'll be honest, I don't think they make a reel fast enough for as fast as some of these, these fish really are. And uh, it, it's been very unique to actually watch some of these bites. Oh, oh man! Oh, way that was awesome! Holy cow! <laughs> that red fish that is right is, there that for exactly, a blast. That is exactly what that was. Golly! <laughs> oh, 
Holy cow. Nice really good one. I have to take pictures. <laughs> Man, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> he was cutting that, that cane like crazy. That's all I could do. I couldn't do anymore. <laughs> God almighty. That was great. That was great. That was a... I mean, when he bit, it was game on. Gosh, it just went so fast. I mean, it was just cutting that cane. Cartwheeling out across It was. There. <laughs> you know, a spinnerbait, gosh, I grew up watching Jimmy Houston throw spinnerbaits, you know, every Saturday. He'd be on TV throwing a spinnerbait in the bushes, in the trees. It was the coolest bite ever. But as, as fishing has evolved, it's, you know, I don't know if fish have gotten smarter. You can obviously still catch a lot of fish on a, uh, on a spinnerbait, but I think that a swim bait and a spinnerbait are very similar in a, in a lot of ways. You know, we're fishing a swim bait. Wade's throwing a big bite swim bait. I'm throwing a Strike King Raid swimmer. Mine's four and three quarter inches, and basically you just reel it really slow. The bite is incredible. What your tendency is, is to jerk too quick. You basically want to make sure it loads up, and it also depends on your line. I'm using braid. Braid has absolutely no stretch. Fluorocarbon, which is what Wade's throwing, has a little bit of stretch, so he has a little more forgiveness in that fish. I've got to make sure that that really loads up before I set the hook. Well, you got him. What a bite. I think it's a good one, too. Golly, what a bite. God, he came from so far. Golly, what a cool bite. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, awesome. that was awesome fish in that shallow cover, getting that swim bait over it. Look at that one. Now that'll show you how far one will come, man. That bait's going across the top and that fish just, I mean, he's just sharking it like a shark. <laughs> he got all the way to it, that's awesome. It's time now for our final break. When we return, we continue talking about the different line types you can use in these scenarios. Do you go with braid for strength or fluorocarbon for greater sensitivity? Stay tuned to learn more. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out a spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite. He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, yeah, good one. If you're ready to be that guy, get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. When you spray on a layer of Sawyer's permethrin insect repellent, you just sprayed on adventure. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Probably one of the number one questions I get, you know, what line do I use? That's a big debate. For every tour out there, everybody's debating which line. I choose the simple side. My choice of line is sunline. One of my favorite lines to use is sunline. How all can you use it? Anywhere you want to. Anywhere there's water and bass, it's good. Walleye, catfish, trout, speckled yeah, trout, right. sharks. There we go. Uh, I don't say this unless I think it's true, but honestly, it's the best in the market. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products. We keep you outdoors. Power Pole, total boat control. And by Wiley X, absolute premium protection. Uh, days like today, a kid would not even want to play video games. Fishman's like this all the Got him. Another big one? No, but it isn't bad. God, no, it's a good one. <laughs> not, not as big as the one you just caught, but I'm going to take it. Heck yeah. <laughs> Get us Hit it picture. right at the boat. <laughs> it's not 20 feet from where I caught mine. No, that's close. This is. I mean, those bites are just so incredible. They just hit so hard. And Wade, you know, one thing we really hadn't even talked about it much, but fishing these, you know, shallow swim baits, there's lots of different ways you can do it. Yeah. I'm throwing braided line. Yep. Yeah. You've got what? You got fluorocarbon on? I'm actually throwing 20 pound sunline sniper. Oh, my old mind. 
And so, I mean, to me, that just kind of makes it where, you know, there's not, it's heavy cover. You yeah. can get away with either way. Um, some situations you might have to throw brave. Some situations when you can't get many bites, you might throw fluorocarbon yep. for sure. But in this situation, you can go either way. You know, these swim bait bites like this in and around heavy cover, um, I mean, it's such a unique bite. You know, Clark's actually throwing sunline braid, I'm throwing sunline fluorocarbon, and it's just a choice in this type of situation. We've talked about it quite a bit. He's throwing a different line as me. He's got a little bit different rod set up than I do. And so basically each one of them is working really good for us. I like my braid, he likes his fluorocarbon. There's not one that's better than the other. It's just personal preference. With my rod, the braid's working perfect. With his rod, the fluorocarbon's working perfect. You just gotta figure out what works best in your situation. Well, he's on that one tree. I couldn't do anything. I saw belly a couple times, but I really don't know. Uh, getting that grass, he's gotta go to him. I mean, I have no idea what's gonna come up out of there, if he's even still there. He's on that one stick here. Yeah. Oh, he's to the, he goes to the right. He's still there. I work the motor. He's still there. There he is right down there. There he is. <laughs> That's why I throw that sniper right there. Wrap around a bush, wrap around the grass. I mean, I haven't retied since we've been here. Probably need to. Famous last word after that. I just couldn't catch up with him, Clark. I mean, they're just, they're hitting with such speed and authority coming. I, I mean, coming out of those holes and just, they're gone. Hand to hand combat fishing at its fine. Yeah, These are days you kind of dream about. No, they totally are. Just kind of dream about. Got it? Yep. <laughs> good one, chunker. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a real good one, actually. I didn't realize he was that big. That big old <laughs> That was a good one. You know, one thing that's just taken me back today is the quality of these fish. I mean, yeah, we've caught some little ones, some 12, 13 inches, but not very many. We've caught a lot of two and a half to four pounders. And I mean, not, one after good. another. And they're so healthy and they're so fast. When you look at fish that are that healthy, you know the fishery's in great shape. You know, coming down here and having a good time with Clark is, is always fun. Anytime we fish together, have an absolute blast. We've got a great history on this lake with some big fish from our, from our past. And, um, but, you know, when we saw the weather coming ahead, I, I was trying to temper my excitement about how great this, this day could be because I, I know what's happening right now. I know how the fishing can be. And I, I felt like we had this dialed in, but this far exceeded any expectations that I could have. Ready? That's what? Pretty good. Yes, it is. Another three pounds. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> that is a sunline braided fish right there all day long. It really is. Look at that. That just tells you that's why you throw the braid. That is braid. Gosh, now I'm even way out after that. <laughs> oh, that was 14 trees. That was fun. 15. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook. We hope you take the tips from today's show, apply them to your next trip, and go catch more fish. I got my power pulled down.
You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube. But I completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.